I want to let you know that the first part of this series now has a text version. It's available at usergames.net. The link will be in the description below. The problem that we have right now is that when we send data, the server might not be able to interpret it. I mean, if we were to send, hello, I am data, what are we to do with it? Is this a text message that we're supposed to put into the text log, the chat log? Or is it the username of a person? Perhaps that person is called hello, I am data. We need a way to identify this. Now we could do something very optimized and convert this into a binary slash hexadecimal and have the first few bytes. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because if this is one byte of data, we could have the first byte of data represent the, uh, while the rest is the message, right? So hello, I am data. So imagine every character here in binary, just as it usually would. But then the very first byte, very first character could represent the, the data type. So if it's zero, maybe it's a chat message. If it's one, maybe it's a, uh, a username. If it's two, perhaps it's a connection request. I don't know, who knows? So you could you could have the first uh, character be that, and even though it, it might take in a, a, a character like that, we would know to ignore the first character uh, as data. All the other characters would not be data. And with, uh, with eight bits to work with, you could store eight Boolean values or up to 256 different identification numbers. So, so that should be quite enough. But we're not going to do any of that because that would be too cool. Instead, we're going to keep things real simple. Once again, only focusing on ENET. And we're going to just send uh, these numbers here. So we're going to send a one at the start of our message if we want to broadcast the, the, the data. This in the chat application, I'm using it as the, the chat message. We're saying that the following data is a chat message. So we'll send a two to say, hey, this is our username. And then the server will send us a number three saying, oh, here you go. Here is your client identification number. And if ever you feel like disconnecting and quitting, you can send a number four request, which would be a disconnect. And we could just look at the first character in a uh, in a set of data but we're actually going to do something a little more and we're going to separate many different types of data in one string so i'm using the pipe character which is like that straight line to separate the different data so here we have an example of the first one so it, we want to broadcast a message we send our identification number then we send the data now this now we're sending our identification number but you'd notice that we already have a way to identify ourselves as a client, but that identification is only reserved for the server. Every individual client only knows one peer, and that would be the server. So within each of our clients, we will create a array of our own type of class to keep track of our own identification system and whatnot, using a client ID in this case, which is going to simply be a number that increments with each connected user. I'm gonna start right away with the server. So that way we can start uh, testing data parsing. So here in the server, I'm gonna create a function at the top, which will be parse data. Now parse data is going to have its first parameter be a init host. It's gonna be uh, the server, the server itself. It's gonna have the ID, the client ID, and it's going to have a, a constant character pointer of the data we want to parse. No, it's going to be just a character pointer that we want to parse. Um, here, I'm going to print out that we're parse, that we, that we will parse the data that, uh, that we're receiving. And then at the end, we'll, uh, we'll print out how we've parsed it, the different data or, or, or whatever. Now, 
we could try out parsing right away. I'm going to put it in when we receive some data that we want to parse this data. Now parse data, remember, takes in the server. So we can just write server. It takes in the ID. I'll put minus one for now because we don't have, we're not sending any ID. We're not using necessarily the, um, the, uh, the addressed host. And we're going to use the, uh, we're, we're going to send in the data. This we do have though. It's going to be the event.packet data. And I did it with the client, but we can destroy, since we're here, the, uh, the packet. Okay, there we go. Now in the client, we're going to test out the sending this type of data. So we're going to start with the username. So here we're, we send the server the user's username. And so here what I'm doing is I'm creating a character array called string data of size 80. It's going to be started to be equal to, to, to two. Uh, two is just an arbitrary number. In fact, I'm just following a, uh, some code that I wrote beforehand. So I must not have started by sending the username, but nonetheless, we can reserve it as to like I uh, used in GIMP. GIMP. It's the join set, right? So we're keeping one for um, broadcast. Then we want to concatenate two strings, the uh, start of this and then the username. So it should write to pipe our username. And then we'll send that uh, since we're concatenating the username to the string data. We're going to then send that as our packet. Now in the server, when we receive this information, we're going to parse it, but what are we going to do with it? What we're going to do indeed. We're going to start by creating a integer called data type. And then we're going to scan F the data that we're, uh, we're parsing. And it should be a number at the start, followed by a pipe. And that will be the data type that we want. So we'll save that into a reference of data type well, into the variable data type. And then we can switch the data type and we can do different cases. Now we could create an enumeration and, uh, and name them, but I'm just going to use numbers for now, since there's only going to be like two of them that we're parsing here and maybe one later anyway. So, uh, if it's a one, we're not doing anything yet, but if it's a two, which it will be, then what we're going to do is create a character array called username of size 80, just like the username. We're going to do another scanf with the data. This time we know it's a two since we're in that case. And then we can put a number and then we can put in a, so we're going to do a scanf. It's going to be a two because we're in that case already. And then it's going, we're going to check for the username, which will be this here. This in, is a string that includes spaces and, and, and things like that. So it's going to go until the end because we're not saying that's in between a pipe. So everything after the two and the pipe is our string. We keep it, the spaces and then we'll store that into our username variable. And then I'm going to create a new character array called send data. This is the data we're going to send. Uh, we're going to start it equal to nothing. And then we're going to concatenate the into the send data. Well, actually we're going to set it, not concatenate it, but we're going to set send data to a, we're going to send it as a number two. Uh, back to the user, but we're not actually going to send this data right away. We're just going to, uh, well, to print it out and we're going to print it out right here. So we're going to send, send data and then, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what that gives. So we're going to compile. 
So we've compiled the client and we have to compile the server as well. And we'll be permissive with this as well. So we launch the server and then we launch the client and we say, um, my username is Ezra. Ah, and you can see that it has done exactly what we wanted. Uh, I just realized that we haven't actually printed out the data as it was separated, but it still did what we wanted. So the server is going to parse, I misspelled parse, but it's gonna parse the data that uh, we're sending here. I'll set that to be correct. Um, so it's gonna parse to pipe Ezra, and then it's gonna send the new data, which includes in between the identification number, which we've just set as minus one. Now would be a pretty good time to start creating our uh, our client data class. It's not gonna be anything too complicated and I'll just create it up here. So I'm gonna call it client data. It's gonna have some public members, some private members. So uh, private is gonna have an identification number and it's gonna have the username, which is a string, which means we might want to include string and why not? We'll just include C string while we're here. Uh, we're also going to include map because we're going to create a map of the uh, client data. In the public, we're going to create the constructor, which will take in a identification number, which will be set to the, uh, well, the identification variable. Uh, and we'll create a function to set the, uh, the username and we're going to create a function to get the identification number and a function to get the username. There we go. So that's our client. Uh, now we're going to create a map that's going to take, it's going to be identified with the identification number itself. Uh, and then it's going to, it's going to be a map of client data pointers that will just call client map, just like that. So now when we're parsing, uh, this here, uh, we could set, we could actually set the, uh, the client map at the identification number area and we could set the username to the username. So now it'd be a good idea that we, we start actually creating a proper way to, to know what this ID should be. So over here, I'm going to create a int, an integer called new player, sorry, new player ID, and it's going to be equal to zero. And whenever we get a new connection, we're going to, uh, we're going to, oops, we're going to augment the number by one. So every time a new player connects, it, the number goes up by one and it's just going to do that uh, automatically. It's just going to auto increment forever and ever and ever, which shouldn't be a problem for the most part, though you might want to make a system for resetting it because eventually the integer is going to get too big, perhaps but it's fine for now. Um, something we're going to do here is we're going to create a for loop of all the client data clients in the map. And whenever somebody connects, we're going to prepare them a little packet here. So we're going to create a character array that's big enough. It's equal to nothing. And then we're going to set it to a, a, a two, which means set username. We're sending this to the client. So the client will take in the client ID. Oh, which client am I setting the username for? And then the username itself. So we're taking the first part of the map, which is the, the actual identification number already. Um, and then, and then we're taking the second part and uh, which is actually actual client class and we're getting the username and just putting that there in the string. Uh, afterwards, we're going to uh, broadcast this packet and 
and that's it. We're, we're, we're going to send this. We're actually going to keep this for later. We'll, we'll get back to that. I, I'm sort of jumping between uh, between places, but let, let's let's keep going with what we're doing. The identification number. We need it now before we can go go forward. So we're going to go. We're going to get the new player ID. Um, we could do this before or after as long as it's always before or after we increment new player ID. But yeah, we're going to we're going to go to a uh, new player ID in the uh, in the map. It's going to be equal to a new client data since this is a new connection. We're going to create it and the uh, the ID is going to be equal to new player ID. Um and then we're going to get the um the the data we can s we're we're taking the data of peer this is a variable that you can set it's basically a pointer uh, a pointer to anything in memory so we're going to set the event peer data because this will allow us when the peer comes back that we can always get the that peer's client data so we're going to set it to 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 uh well what we just created so the client map at new player id which is this new client data we just created and just like that that's it so now we're creating every new connection we're creating a uh, a client or we're, we're, we're and we're a client data class we're keeping the id everywhere and, and everything's fine but here we're actually going to send that to the uh we're gonna send this to to that new connection. So before, when I was explaining in in, uh, in GIMP here, that you want to send two to receive three. Never mind that. Every time there's a new connection, we just send a three, a received client ID. So whenever the server sees, oh, there's a new user that's being connected, the user, the server sends that user their client ID, and then uh, and we'll we'll store it there. So the data to send will be another thing here. So we want that to be equal to two, three for the data. And it's going to be equal to the new player D. And yeah, and all of this. So new player ID either needs to be when we increment it either before or after this whole chunk of code here. Uh, and yeah, we, we haven't added, but we're gonna we're gonna send a packet. So yeah, let's let's start let's start doing that. So here on the top, we're gonna we're gonna add a uh, a send packet function. This function will take in. Uh, in fact, it's gonna be exactly the the same as the client one. So we can just copy paste it from the client. We already wrote this. So most of this remains the same, but instead of a peer, it's a server, but Actually, the code would still work. It's just naming at this point. So that's good. So now we can keep going with our code. <laughs> so now we can keep going over here. So uh, we want to send a packet to the uh, the newly connected peer of this event. So we can just do event up here, the same one that we've been setting all this data for. And we're going to send them the data to send. Uh, you could name your variables better than me if you want, uh, because this isn't necessarily the best naming I've ever done. But yeah, there we're we're done. So we we're sending the ID, the identification number now to the client, and because we're storing it here. We can actually, when we parse the data here, we can actually set this properly. So I'm going to do a static cast, and we're going to cast that um, variable, the data variable of the peer, to our client data class. So event.peer data, and now that it's cast, we can just get our function get id and send the appropriate identification perfect so now in the client we're going to want to also start parsing some data 
So I'm going to add this over here in the client and change this to peer. Or in fact, no, we don't even need any of this. All we need to parse here is the data. And you'll see why in a second. Um, in the server, we need, we're sending, we're always sending information back, but in the client, we're just receiving data. I guess that's why I haven't incorporated. Honestly, that's my only explanation. Anyway, let's keep going. So it's going to be though very similar. We have a, a, a data type, a identification number, and then the data that we're sending is we're, we're going to, we're going to get, we're going to extrapolate the information we need. It's going to be two numbers separated by a, uh, a bar. That's not necessarily always true though, is it? No, yes, it is. We're always going to send, we're always going to receive data type and, and an identification number as the client, the server, the server when receiving the username or already knows who you are, the client doesn't. So the client is going to, uh, it, it, it always needs to receive an identification number. All right. So let's actually, uh, put them into their, uh, appropriate variables and switch the data type just like we did in the server and we'll do the different cases as we get to them but we're focusing on case two for the moment um so if if so now because it's sending it back to everybody we want to check if the identification number is not equaled to our own id so we're going to want to store our, our ID and I'll do that here with a static integer and call it client ID and it's going to be equal to minus one. So, uh, if it's equal to minus one, that means we haven't received our, our ID and we could do some error checking with that. Uh, if not, it should be equal to zero, one, two, three, four, five, depending on what we've done, what we've done in the server. And if we haven't received anything, it's minus one, it's an error. So, after we've set the ID that we'll do later, we just want to make sure that when the data comes back to us, that it's not equaled to the client ID. We should probably actually set it before before this gets too confusing. Actually, it's it's the next case that we want to do that in, because case three, if you remember, is uh, is where we uh, receive our client ID. So let's just do case three real quick here. So it'll be, it should be a three followed by a, our ID, which we're kind of getting back here. Honestly, we don't even need to do this. Now that I think about it, we could just equal this to the identification number. There you go. It's done. If the case is three, logically the next ID we want is uh, the ID. So now that's set. So if we're, if the server is sending us our ID, so if the data type is three, then the ID that we're receiving is our own and we get to set it accordingly. Now two, if the ID is the same as ours, we don't need to set our own username. We already set it. We know what our username is. Otherwise, we're gonna save other people's usernames. So this is a bit of the same uh, stuff where we're just checking at the end uh, the, the asterisks here mean that we're ignoring it. And this, if I remember correctly, means that we're either including or excluding the pipe. I'm not, I don't remember. Nonetheless, this means a string. So you can just set it up how you want. And now, but now we've gotten the username. The problem is now we have no place to store it. So we're going to do some more copy, cop, copy pasting. We're going to copy the client data from the server and paste it here on the top of the client. I know we're going some back and forward, but it's just because a lot of the code is the same. If anything, the text version should help a lot uh, to, to visualize because then you can do the back and forward and, and actually check yourself. But if not, we're just doing a lot of, uh, of the same stuff here. So, uh, we're going to create a map of identifying it with 
integers. It's going to be a client data pointer. And it's going to be a client map. There you go. That's what we're going to call it. So that's good. So now if we come back here to the username, we can actually do the same thing here. So, so here we're, we're, if we haven't seen, like if we're receiving this data, username data, uh, it's here that we're kind of getting a first connection because you're only gonna send a username once. So as soon as you send a username is when we're actually creating it. This could be organized differently, which we will do in the next episode, you'll see. But for now, it's fine. So we're gonna, we're gonna set the client map at the ID that we're currently at to a new client data since we haven't received logically since we're only sending the username once this means a uh, new connection and uh, and at that ID we're going to set the username to our username or their username so that's good since we're here we should probably start doing the broadcasting so broadcasting is a one followed by our identification number, followed by uh, the data that we want to broadcast. And this will just be plopped right into the uh, the chat log. But if we're the one typing it, we don't want it to appear twice, which uh, is what we're going to do, which is what this is for, in fact, and is what we're going to use here as well. So if the ID is not equal to two, client ID. So if it's not ourselves, then there is a new message size 80. We ignore the first two uh, parameters since we've already set them. And then this is exactly the same as below. So a string I think it's it, it ignores pipes is what that means. So don't include pipes. So we send this data and we store it into the message, just the end basically. So the actual message itself. And then we can use our, our chat screen post message with we, the, the username being the client ID get username dot C string and then the message being the message and just like that done plop it onto the screen. Now when we send a message we we were sending it we're just sending the message right now. So what we would want to do is maybe change this up a little bit. So we're going to create a character array called uh, I don't know, message of size 80, like the other one. And it's going to be equal to, because we are broadcasting a one pipe. That's it for now. And uh, we're going to concatenate to the message the uh, the the C string of, of MSG, which is just the message. So maybe this is more like message data, I guess could be a better name anyway. And then when we send the pick packet, we're not going to send MSG. We're going to send uh, the message data. And I think this just because of the way I've done this. No, I think this will be fine. Yeah. All right. So, so, so that should be it for the client. Now, if we go back to the server, go back into parsing data, we haven't done a number one yet. 
I'm adding uh, brackets here just to make sure that all these variables don't. Uh, I like to reuse variable names, so it, it, it'll de deinitialize any variables I create with, within those uh, brackets. So here we want to create a message 80, sc scan the data, ignore the first parameter and then grab the second one because that's what we're sending, right? We're sending a one followed by the message and that's it. We're not sending the ID when we broadcast. No, we're not sending the, the ID. We are sending the ID. Well, suddenly I've decided that I don't want to send the ID. I think that's only receiving it because when we're sending the message, the server know it's if we're the client that we want it to know for one when we parse data over here here we receive always two data type and id and it's only the server that doesn't care about the identification number because the server has a list of everybody so we don't really care about it so when we're sending to the server we don't necessarily care about uh, client IDs. So that's a little explanation. I could have maybe been a little more precise here that the CID is only for the server communicating to the client and not the client communicating to the server. I really suggest I'm going to try to get this out as fast as possible, maybe for next week. Uh, the chat version that the, the I'll try to make a text version for next week of this tutorial because I think that will really help because I don't think this is the best explanation I've ever given. Uh, nonetheless, let's keep going. So yeah, we're only receiving a, a, a um, the type, which we're going to ignore here. And then everything else, the string is just going to be the uh, the message. So we're going to store that into message. Then we're going to create a another character away array of the data we want to send. Equal it to null. And then we want that to be equal to one. And then here, because we're sending it to the client, we need that ID number and then we send them the, the string. So send them the ID, send them the message. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. And then here we want to uh, broadcast again. So we, we've written broadcast at uh, uh, two places, I think now, or is it just the one? No, I think, yeah. So here we, we've written broadcast packet over here and over here, and we're going to create that function. So when we send a packet, we're sending it to an individual. We're saying you, Mr. Peer, I want to send it to you. But when we send when we broadcast a packet, we're sending it to everyone. Yeah, so here when we're sending the packet, we're always sending it to the peer, which now I think about it, I named the variable here server. It really should be peer. We're only sending it to peers when we send the packet. So now when we broadcast an event, which I don't know where to put it, let's put it uh, here. So when we broadcast a packet, this is going to take the uh, the server init host and a const character array of the data. We're going to create our packet. This actually is going to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy paste that. But instead of init peer send, it's init host broadcast which will take in the server 
enet host, uh, the channel, and then the packet. So channel always using zero for now. Uh, the server is the server, and well, the packet is the packet. So, so now we can actually broadcast these events. So here we want to broadcast to the server, which we have over here, the send data. And down here, we're also where we put that comment. We're also going to uh, broadcast to the server the send data. All right, perfect. And I believe those are the two variables we need. Yep. All right. So, now we're going to, we're going to go to the, we're going to go to enet event type disconnect. Because over here, we're going to send in the disconnecting data. So uh, we call that to null. We'll, uh, we'll send the four. Oops. The, the four, which is the disconnect event, and the ID of the client we want to disconnect. The server is going to manage disconnecting that client, but this is to broadcast to everybody else, all the, all the clients, so that the clients can uh, remove their version of that client. And we'll do another static class, uh, st static cast to client data so that we can get the event peer data so that we can get the ID. And then that's all we need. And then we can broadcast the disconnect data uh, to the server, which is the first parameter. So we're going to broadcast the packet to the, di we're going to broadcast the disconnect data from the server to everybody who's connected. And then because that uh, peer is disconnecting, we're going to send that peer data to null. It might actually be good to delete it, I think. I'm going to actually try that. I'll do it after. You'll see in the text version if you should delete it or not. <laughs> oh boy, this is cringy. All right, so. And and that's it. I'm going to try. No, I'm not going to try it right away. So that should be everything I, I think so let's compile and see if we have any errors because we most likely have at least a couple errors so the server definitely has some and we just forgot a semicolon is that no we forgot probably some other things oh yeah we let's start with the client so the client, we forgot to include the map. Yep. So we want to include map. Um, oops. And we forgot a semicolon at line 159. Uh, yeah, right here, forgot a semicolon. That's uh, exactly a couple of errors. So if we recompile that, that has compiled without any issues. And now for the server, 
we also only have a couple of errors. Wow, it's pretty on point with that. Uh, 126, 126. Okay, right, so uh, same thing. I think I've just reused some variables. So I'm gonna wrap, if I can do this simply, can I do, uh, well, you know, that like that and then you know just wrap all of these cases all three of them into semicolon uh, not semicolons into brackets curly brackets so now if we recompile there seems to be no errors so now let's test and let's see if everything works I'll bring along a uh, another client to test as well so let's launch the server server remains there let's launch client number one call him Ezra alright so maybe some ordering of stuff can be done yeah for, uh, here a packet of links is being printed that, that's because we're printing. Yeah, let's let's change that. I think everything works, but let's change that. So in the client, when we're receiving all this data, we shouldn't be printing because now, now we're using, uh, you know, my, uh, I mean, you can keep the print depending on what you've done, but because it's a terminal application, it's kind of, kind of ruining some of the placement of stuff. So over here in a message loop, let's just, let's not even print out that. We don't, we don't even want that. Oh, and I realized that when we receive the data, we're not doing anything with it. So let's, yeah, exactly. Okay, so when we receive some data, we're not doing anything. So let's actually <laughs> parse the data. I forgot, we, we completely forgot to do that. So let's remove all of this and let's parse the event packet data and then destroy the, the packet once we're done. So that's really the, the two step process that we have here. And that's it. All right, that's all we were missing. So uh, let's go for round two. So let's uh, recompile. We don't seem to have any errors. So let's try it. Let's launch the server. Launch client number one. My name is Ezra. Okay, it's been received. Let's write hello. Okay, let's connect and let's call them ours. Let's write hi. Okay, server is uh, receiving data from, oh, oh, we have a segmentation. Oh, okay. This is not what we wanted. Okay, so something crashed. Let's figure out what what it was. Uh, it seems to have been when a secondary client connected. So uh, test is over here, and we have test two. Both are fine. I will type this oh okay so he received that uh, I will type this too and that's when it crashes interesting interesting okay let's figure out what's going what's going on here so here when he types something we receive everything. We receive the username and stuff. That's fine. But if he types something, it crashes. And it crashes at when we're getting the username. We must not be setting something correctly. So I figured out a bit of what the issue might be. Uh, it crashed at this point here where we're getting the username. Uh, I'm thinking that this variable might not be set, perhaps, because I'm pretty sure if we just 
that something like this that it would uh, it would work so let's let's give that a shot yeah so that's no that's no problem I should have probably removed this beforehand so I launch me and if I launch the other person and I say hi here I'll say hi here I'll say that and then if I say hello that works so the chatting portion of, of, of everything uh, seems to work we're just not getting uh, we're not getting that so let's try to fix that I'm wondering if it's because we never actually all right after uh, I don't know but I found it I found what the issue is we never actually broadcast a username which is why it's null and why everything crashes I'm not exactly sure how I forgot because it's right here in my notes as well but basically uh, all you would have to do is broadcast a packet to the server or from the server that's the send data like look it's not here we never even use the send data we s we only printed that we were gonna send it that's why we never actually sent it so there you go we don't really need any of that so yeah I'm not sure why I forgot to do that but I'm pretty sure that was uh, the problem here through my uh, my tests so now if is it somewhere in the history yeah there it is there uh, oops forgot something oh, uh, that I yeah. We want a semicolon there. There you go. So now if uh, we compile, we don't have to touch the uh, the client necessarily, although I will because I added some debugging stuff, but really there shouldn't have been anything um, anything there. Uh, it was just it was just me forgetting forgetting that. So everything in the client was fine. It was just the server. We forgot to broadcast the username. So yeah, so so let's give this a shot like we were supposed to a little while ago. So launch the server, launch this, my name is Ezra. Launch this, my name is ours. Uh, I forgot to, I thought I just removed that and compiled. Well, oh, hold on. Over here, uh, it, I think it's already like that when I first wrote it, but it's a C string. Okay, now everything should be exactly like it was on the client's side. There you go, there you go. Launch the server. Launch this. My name is Ezra. Launch this. My name is ours. Hello? Hi. Wow, it works. <laughs> See, that wasn't too complicated. All you had to do was remember. You just had to remember not to forget to, to, to broadcast all the events that we're supposed to send out. But that's it. Cool. So, yeah, no, it was maybe a little chunky uh, of a video, this, but uh, I mean... It works, right? Now we can add like other people. When other people join, they don't see the chat history, but they are sent all the other usernames. So he can see, oh, hi, I'm new. And everybody receives that because he's a new connection. But even though this guy is an old connection, he can say, I was here first and nothing should crash. And we still receive the appropriate username. And this is Awesome. So I hope that this video was useful. It'll definitely make more sense in the third part because we're gonna rewrite everything from scratch and we're gonna use some of the more advanced features of Enet to kind of uh, fade into the uh, second series that I won't start right away. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to write. I'm gonna. St I'm gonna start writing the text version of this and publish it on the user games website that way it can be a whole lot easier to follow since that's kind of what I'm used to because uh, now we're jumping around we're doing this and doing that instead of staying with a big chunk of code with everything explained I guess I don't know you tell me I hope this video was at least somewhat useful and I'll see you in a future video